Hi everybody, Kevin DeBrita here from Finch Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC and behind me here I've got the 2020 GMC Canyon. Let's take a look together. Whether you own a Canyon or you're looking to test drive one, this would be a great vehicle to take a look at, or a great video I should say, to take a look at. Uh, this has our elevation package on it. This gives it uh, the nice set of wheels and that monochromatic finish out front. So while I'm walking around the outside, I'll touch base quickly on the remote. If you're familiar with GM products, uh, you know this little button up here is the remote start button. And in, to use our remote st start button on this vehicle, you'll hit the lock button. Hold the start button for three seconds. We'll see the lights flash and the vehicle will start. So that's one way of starting the vehicle. You also have the um, application and the paid connected package, which will uh, allow you to remote start your vehicle from your cell phone. Fantastic feature. It's on a monthly subscription basis, so you can activate it when you need it and deactivate it when you don't. Quick, quick a look at the back. You see we've got the uh, trailer hitch on the bottom and we've got all of our wiring connectors here. One pin set up here and the other down on the bottom. Over here, this is how you're going to access your spare tire. I'm not really good at opening these. There we are. Um, so underneath the um, rear seat will be all your jack stuff and then all the information, all the uh, parts you'll need to access your spare tire. Going to open up the uh, tailgate. It is an easy open tailgate. So it'll come down nice and slow. And this one has the factory spray liner. You can tell that because of the nice GMC logo right up at the back. Any of the uh, aftermarket spray liners will not have that GMC logo. Lots of tie downs. So four across the bottom in the corners. And then up top, you'll notice these little uh, ovals. And there's nine of them right across the top. From the parts department, you can get uh, additional anchors. Also got a couple down here. Just notice those. Uh, additional anchors that you can plug in there so whether you're putting a dirt bike in there or you just want to prevent things from rolling around you can set those anchors up anywhere you like and of course the back window we've got uh, our rear slider let's uh, open up the back door haven't had this one cleaned yet so we've got our uh, floor mats in the bottom and the window sticker there on the side so just a manual slider Nice feature to have and also built in rear defrogger, which you don't often see on the uh, on the rear windows when you have a slider. Headrest, as you can see, you can fold them down for better visibility or leave them up for safety if you've got somebody in the uh, back of that uh, vehicle. And then underneath, I'm just gonna have to move my phone. There's the jack information that uh, I talked about there and a little bit of full-time storage underneath the seats. Put those seats back down on the back. A couple of USB ports and a charging port. Great if you need to uh, charge things on the go. It seems like everybody's got a device these days. And in the driver area, this is where I'll spend a little bit more time. Obviously locks, mirrors, windows. And then you've got child door locks and the uh, lockout for the windows. So when these lights are illuminated, I'll hop in so we can get that going. When the lights are illuminated, you can actually lock the back doors from the uh, inside so they can only open from the outside and you can do that all electronically. So now I've got my door lock, child door locks on in the back and uh, let's say I was driving around with a couple of buddies and they couldn't get out. Very easily just push that button and now they can get out. Same thing with the windows. Right here, easy to make that adjustment. Looking forward onto the dash, I apologize for the uh, sun glare there. Uh, this little wheel, that's gonna be the intensity of your dash display and your radio. Beside that, we have our automatic lights. So normally you're gonna leave the vehicle in the auto setting. However, if you went to the drive-in or you had the car running and you wanted the lights off, you would just click it to the off position. That would turn your lights off until you put the vehicle back in drive. Got our daytime running lights or marker lamps, I should say. Daytime running lights are on all the time. And then your full headlamps, if for any reason you wanted to turn your headlights on uh, manually. And then pushing the button, that activates your fog lights. That's that symbol right there. So I'm going to put it back into the auto mode. And then over here we have our four-wheel drive system. Two-wheel, auto, four-wheel high, 
four wheel low and there is a neutral position there if you're ever looking to flat tow the vehicle just going back to a couple different versions of the all-wheel drive four wheel high uh, that gives you equal power to all four wheels all the time so if you're in four wheel high you don't want to be on dry pavement you want to be on sand dirt snow and ice um, that way when you turn corners you're not going to have to worry about binding up the tires automatic is going to run primarily in rear wheel drive and when the rear wheels slip the front wheels will kick in and of course two wheel drive is going to give you the best fuel efficiency uh, these are all shift on the fly with the exception of uh, four wheel low and neutral and if you try to shift into four wheel low while you're driving too fast um, it won't allow you to do it so nice protection systems built into the vehicle taking a look back we can see uh, our steering wheel and driver information center over here we have our cruise control this button here activates your cruise you can see on the driver information center there at the bottom the light flashing when that light is on that means you can use your set and resume buttons and on the outside here is our cancel button coming up behind a tractor trailer or some traffic and you want to coast to a stop or coast to slow down you can cancel it that will still leave your cruise control setting so you can resume back to your regular speed once you're ready on the other side we've got uh, controls for our driver information center and our telephone uh, as well as muting the radio if we decide to mute the radio and siri or um, google pass through I'm not sure if you've used the voice recognition systems on your phones, but uh, this allows us to access Siri by pushing and hold it, or Google Assistant if you've got an Android phone. Great way to send and receive text messages, make uh, reminder notes in your calendar, or just get information uh, from Siri or the Google Assistant. So push and hold, that's good on almost every GM car, a feature I use all the time talking about the driver information center I'm just going to go through it quickly here using this five-way switch so we've got over and you can see across the top there we got the house menu the I menu for information the music navigation if you've got um, a vehicle equipped with navigation or your turn-by-turn -turn navigation through OnStar which this vehicle has the phone that they have connected and then settings so settings is where you'll change things uh, like your units if you're traveling uh, to the US or traveling to Canada and you need to switch back and forth uh, currently we've got this in kilometers per hour so I'm gonna leave it there information pages we can scroll through here and some of the information on that uh, initial information page you might not want um, if you're not towing for example you might not want uh, to have uh, you know engine hours or transmission fluid temperatures um, so you can turn those off if you want to just gives you a nice clean look and then home page options um, you've got the option for speedometer time and fuel range personally I like to keep those all turned on uh, this is a neat one I don't know if you know anybody's got a heavy foot but we can go in here and we can turn on a speed warning so in Canada if you're doing 150 kilometers an hour uh, they'll impound your car uh, on the highway because you're doing 50 kilometers over. Uh, not that I'd ever recommend driving this fast, but I do have a few customers. They'll set it up around 140, and if they get caught up with the flow of traffic, then they know that it's time to slow down. Uh, when the feature is turned on, then once you get to 140 kilometers an hour, you'll get ding ding over speed. Just a little reminder to slow you down, although it will not prevent you from going any faster. If you're looking for something like that then you definitely want to look into the team driver which i'll go over a little more uh, once we're reviewing the radio software information that just lets you know if you've got the most up-to-date software in your vehicle i'm going to scroll all the way back to the information and give you a little bit more detail Let's see if i can get the sun out of the way here a little bit more detail on what's available so right at the top there we've got our digital speedometer as we scroll down we've got trip one trip two fuel range this one needs uh, some fuel in it if it's going to have a full tank oil life tire pressures now you'll notice the tire pressures on this truck are not identical uh, two reasons for that we're not using nitrogen we're using air and so it will change its tire pressure based on the temperature uh, of the air inside the tires also uh, we're using kilopascals 
So kilopascals, uh, obviously larger number than PSI. So looking at all of these numbers, they're probably within about a half a pound um, and very close. And of course, they're all green, so they're good to go. Oil pressure, transmission fluid temperature, just a blank page if you prefer a really clean look to your dash. Back to the home screen, you can see now we've got our uh, speed, how fast we're going, how far we can go before we run out of gas, and right up in the top corner, it's 9.07 a.m., there is your time. Across the bottom, we are facing west, we have our cruise control on, there's 48 kilometers on the vehicle, and we are in park. While I talk about uh, park, just going to go to the transmission. Normally you're going to drive in drive. Once in a while you're in a rush, you're going to go all the way back into L and you're not going to realize it until you're driving the car and your RPMs are going up and your gears are not changing. So you'll notice down here it tells us we're in low gear number one. We can change or limit our top gear going through the transmission. So now we have access to all eight gears of the transmission. We only want access to four and I'm using the button on the side here, plus and minus. The other thing, if you do happen to go into low mode by accident and you notice your transmission is not shifting gears while driving, just push it up into drive and it will choose the appropriate gear and put you back into drive. While I'm playing with the transmission, I just put it into reverse for us. We can have a look at our backup camera. We've got uh, some lines on the backup camera that are gonna help guide us into our parking position. Uh, and if you're towing a trailer, this is our trailer line. So backing up onto the trailer, a lot easier to get uh, the, um, the hitch right over top of the ball by using those guidelines. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but most of my customers do appreciate having both options. Back into park. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, what we got going on here uh, with a few of the options and our climate control system, and then I'll spend a bit more time going over the radio. On the bottom here, we've got our four-way flashers or hazard lights. Traction control, you can turn traction control on and off. Um, what traction control does is it limits wheel spin. So most of the time it's gonna come in handy, but every once in a while, if you got bogged down in some deep snow, you're gonna to want to spin the wheels to get yourself or rock you back and forth out of the hole. So the only time you're gonna turn off traction controls if you're actually stuck. Um, there's your light for your box um, on the top of the cab, shining down into the box, and then tow haul mode. Um, if you've never used tow haul mode, tow haul mode changes how your transmission operates based on uh, the fact that you are towing. It's gonna take a little bit longer. So normally maybe you'll shift around 2000 RPM, might shift up to 2500 RPM or say rev up to 2500 RPM before it shifts. Um, that's gonna have less load on the transmission when the shift happens. And then the shift is also gonna snap into place a little bit faster. So you've got less wear and tear on your transmission when towing. Uh, because you're doing all of this when you're towing, it'll also give you a little bit better fuel economy when you've got that heavy load on you. So if you're towing anything uh, of significant weight, make sure you've got your tow haul mode on. If you're not, leave the tow haul mode off. Up top, we've got our automatic climate control system. You'll notice right now I've got the temperature on low. Just gonna turn it up here for a little bit, 29 degrees. I'm gonna hit the auto button and you should hear the fan speed kick up. We're gonna switch over from air conditioning to heat. And as the car climatizes towards the 29 degrees, you'll hear the, feel the fan speed uh, come down. I'm just gonna move that temperature a little closer to normal and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Now the fan speed has gone away. It's gonna keep the car at 21 degrees. A lot of my customers prefer using the auto setting and adjusting the temperature as opposed to always playing around with the fan speed and trying to keep everybody happy inside the vehicle. Airflow, you've got uh, lots of different options for airflow. That's pretty straightforward. Some cars have knobs. This one's got buttons. Speed buttons here for your front defrost and rear defrost, so they're very easy to get to if you need to clean off your front or back window. And moving up is our radio system. Probably gonna spend about the same amount of time on the radio system. 
just kind of going through some of the different options and features. I'm going to start with users. I'm not going to set one up right now, but uh, if you own a vehicle that has the opportunity for users, please set up a user ID um, for one or both drivers. Having the user ID in some cases will connect to the actual key and remote. And so it knows who's driving the car. It knows all the preferences that you've set. And I'm gonna go into settings here so we can take a look at some of those preferences. When you're logged in and registered, it's gonna uh, know what your preferences are. And not only is that helpful for this vehicle, it's also helpful if you rent another GM vehicle or if you buy another GM vehicle. Then you just enter in your profile and it knows the way you want your vehicle set up. While we're in here, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of these vehicle options. Rear seat reminder. If the back doors open within 10 minutes of operation, the uh, you're gonna get a chime and a warning in your driver information center that says check back seat. Uh, so whether you've left sub one or something back there, it's always nice to have that reminder. If you find it a little bit annoying, it can be turned off. Climate and air quality, we can go into that menu. We talked about the automatic fan speed in the auto setting you can change the range that you want that automatic fan speed to operate in so if you prefer less noise and less blowing we can move to low and if you always want lots of airflow we can move that to high while we're in here we've got uh, automatic defog and automatic rear defog if you're using your remote start it'll turn those on if it is cold enough outside collision detection systems uh, that's our rear parking camera in this vehicle uh, you can turn the symbols off if you don't want the park assist symbols. Moving down to comfort and convenience, there's a really loud chime volume. Don't ask me why anybody would want to make it any louder than it, it comes from factory, but you can definitely turn that up if you can't hear the chimes. Lighting, we can have uh, our locator lights on, so when you unlock from the remote, then uh, your outside lights will come on and you'll know that that is definitely your car. And then exit lighting, depending on whether you park inside or outside. Some people like their lights to turn off right away. Others want the lights to stay on nice and long until they get inside the house. So I'll let you program that to what works best for you. Um, power door locks, nothing in there that you really need to change. Um, feedback for your... Um, for your remote so some people like the horn to honk when you lock the car um, so that's where we can make this happen uh, currently if you lock it twice the horn will honk will uh, if you lock it twice the horn will honk uh, using the remote and then unlocking it once will do just the driver door unlocking it twice will do all the doors mm -hmm. if you'd like to unlock have it do all the doors right away we can just make that change right here and by uh, unlocking the vehicle just once all the doors will open up. I'll put it back to the default in this vehicle. Teen driver we had talked about. I'm just going to log in here real quickly. This is a pretty phenomenal feature. Great conversation starter. You can program a key to be the teen driver key. And when that key is used, you can have a little report card. How far was the car driven? What was the maximum speed? Was there any over speed warnings? That's a programmable speed that we can input into the vehicle. How many wide open throttles were there and did the traction control, stability control, or any of the other safety features engage? Uh, really great conversation starter. I know most of us have had wide open throttle on our vehicle on occasion. Um, if you're doing it 75 times in six and a half kilometers, you might be doing it a little too often. So like I said, great conversation starter. Um, this will show you how to program the keys um, and of course clear the keys. Another thing when you have your teen driver active is the radio will not go up to full volume and the radio will not turn on unless the driver's seat belt is buckled. And if there is a passenger, the passenger seat belt needs to be buckled. So there's a little bit of uh, programming features you can play around with uh, whether you've got the vehicle at home or you're taking it for a test drive. A um, couple of apps in here just touching base on, you know, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, some more of your climate control settings, um, phone information, and your MyGMC app. And then system is where you're going to change your time and date, the language, add phones, manage your Wi-Fi networks and hotspots. I'm going to go back to the home page, and uh, while I'm hitting that home page, there's a home button here and a home button here. So you same button, just pick the one that works best for you. And then across the bottom here, I call them speed buttons to your radio, phone settings, compass or navigation, and then your climate control settings. 
So climate control can be operated on the touchscreen or it can be operated down here with what we call the hard keys. Audio, if you're familiar with uh, most of the newer vehicles, right across the top are all of your presets. This one has satellite radio in it. Um, the nice thing about this is you can program AM and FM radio stations all on the same page. So just by pushing and holding, you can program that FM station. And so I've got XM and FM on the same page. We can swipe over to page number two. And the more you add, the more pages you get. These little dots will change here. So we have AM, FM, satellite radio. If I hit the more button, that's gonna give us access to Bluetooth. So if I had a phone connected, that phone would show up there. Um, and then in your sound menu, this is where you're gonna adjust your treble and bass. You can also adjust balance and fade. So if kids are sleeping in the back and you want all the sound up to the front, you can do that. If you're listening to uh, Barney videos, you can put all the sound in the back and it's a little bit quieter for yourself. So I'll put that back there in the middle. Um, browsing. So along the side here, you'll notice these little stars. These are great because you can go through and pick, oh, I like Jack FM and I favorited it. Now that has automatically put it up here in my favorites. And so you can do that with AM, FM and satellite radio. We'll move over to satellite radio. It's all up and running. Browsing through satellite radio. Obviously, lots of channels. And you get that free for three months. Um, at the end of the three months, they'll contact you to find out, um, do you want to keep it active uh, and pay a monthly subscription, or it'll just go away. If you don't uh, set up a subscription with satellite radio, it will automatically deactivate in three months. I think that kind of touches base on the radio, um, phones, Bluetooth, very easy to set up. Connect the phone, add a phone, and then on your phone, search for My GMC. When you are pairing the phone through My GMC, there's usually a few screens that uh, pop up on your cell phone so that you've got access to either messages or um, contacts. You will want to make sure that you uh, click OK on that so it connects automatically. And cancel that for now. The other thing is this vehicle will connect to two phones at once. So there'll be a primary phone, which is good for sending and receiving or making outgoing calls and receiving incoming calls. And the secondary phone will receive incoming calls. So it's nice when you're traveling as a couple, everybody's got their phone connected. And if the phone rings, it really doesn't matter who's driving or where the phones are, they can be answered. So we talked about phones, Wi-Fi hotspot, not active right now, but uh, you do have one month or three gigs of Wi-Fi all built in. So um, if you want to add a monthly subscription package, you can do that, uh, you know, get a gig and a half or four gigs every month, and that'll be on a reoccurring bill. Most of my customers find they don't need it on a month to month basis, but they do love it if they go on vacation and they can buy a five or 10 gig package that everybody can use. Settings we played with already, and then we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. When your phone is plugged into the USB port down here, those will illuminate iPhones. You don't have to do anything other than plug it in and you'll have access to Apple CarPlay. Android Auto, you will need to download the Android Auto app. Speaking of apps, I'm just gonna move into our apps menu here. Uh, General Motors is always updating the types of apps that are available. And so you can see we've got uh, just the app manager on here. Um, but the weather app, once everything gets activated, um, Spotify, I believe, is also available uh, now in some of our vehicles. And GM is constantly working on changing that. Uh, I know there's some talks in the works with um, Alexa so that you can have Alexa in your vehicle. I'm not quite sure what that does for us yet, but it'll be interesting to try that out. So that's a quick overview. Oh, almost forgot OnStar. Up at the top here, you do get 10 years of complimentary coverage for OnStar. We're gonna wanna make sure we activate that by hitting the blue button when we pick up the vehicle. Uh, you also get up to three months of the full package. So navigation directions, remote link app, everything available through OnStar. If you sign up for their pre-authorized billing, they'll give you the full package for three months. If you don't wanna do the pre-authorized billing, they'll give you a month to try it out and you can decide uh, what you'd like to do from there. 
So we have our hang up button here when we're on the phone with uh, OnStar. This will get us to a live advisor and then we have our emergency button. So both of these obviously with an active subscription. Above that, we've got um, our airbag is off for our second passenger. If we had somebody sitting there, airbag on light would activate. And then of course, uh, seatbelt light would come on here if somebody was sitting there. Interior lights, we've got a couple of reading lamps on both sides. And then in the center, we have lights always off, lights always on. And then when you open the door, the light will come on. So that's the position most people will keep it in. And then we got a little sunglass holder up in here. So it's been about 25 minutes. If you stuck with me, thank you so much. A uh, quick overview on the canyon that I'm sitting in right now. If you have any questions, feel free to message me or comment. Um, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and drive safe.